Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be with you here in wonderful Berlin. Maybe you could just begin with a brief introduction to your film. For people yes. who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? Um, so Sweet As is a joyful coming of age road movie about a young indigenous girl in the remote um, Pilbara of Western Australia who kind of goes on a journey of discovery and finds her courage and her perseverance and her human spirit and unrequited love. <laughs> and tell me about the sort of initial inspiration and the genesis of the project and you know how much was it informed by your own background, your own life and you know how much is fictionalised. Just tell us a bit about how you got to this story. Yeah okay so when I was 14 I got this amazing opportunity, um, a lifeline let's say it, um, to go on a photo safari with National Geographic as you do in the 80s so I'm giving away my age. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was really quite extraordinary because we were just given cameras and told to take as many photos as our little hearts could desire. And it was, um, we did have like the canister cameras, so it was like we got rolls and rolls and rolls. Um, especially because, anyway, I digress, I, I ramble a little bit because my head starts going, oh, and then this <laughs> happened. But um, what was really beautiful when we were doing the film, deciding to that this was the, my first feature, mm -hmm. I did a little bit of more research on the actual photo safari and I found out it was for at-risk kids and I didn't know this. It was an epiphany, it was really, I got quite emotional, it was cathartic and I thought how beautiful was it of these people to provide this without doing a a um, counselling session. It's like, here's a camera and go and discover yourself. And I really, really wanted to capture that in the essence of the film yeah. as well, yeah. and which I think helped me write the characters of the minders, um, of Fernando and Mitch, to just let the kids get through what they need to yeah. um, and just be there. Uh, and so it, it really, it, it, it was inspired by this trip. And because I didn't know why the other kids were there, because it wasn't like, oh, why are you here and la la la. So it was purely inspired all the other characters from my own life experience, you know, and all my family and because um, I have a big family unit as a First Nations people, our family is like hundreds and hundreds of people. So mm. I had a lot of people and life experience to draw on. Mm. Yeah. And how challenging or cathartic, as you mentioned there, is it to go back and revisit your own story? And it's so true what you say there sometimes when you go through something as a youth, you don't fully understand the context of your situation. So you're, you're looking at things through, through an adult lens. Yeah. I, I was thinking of um, uh, After Sun, you know, the, the, the recent film After yeah. Sun? No, I Charlotte haven't West. seen it. But that's I will. kind of in, in, in that similar way, like revisiting your memories and, and your experiences as a young person, but through, through yeah. an adult gaze. So you know, how do you think that kind of brings a different perspective on things? Yeah, it's quite extraordinary because as an adult, you understand your mistakes and you, you recognise the people that were around you that were there to really support you. And it's so important now, uh, there, there's so many messages I want from the story, like even Fernando not being a predator and just being there, someone who's there to help and guide as a man. And uh, you, you see these things happening as an adult and you understand them but yeah as a teen it's just oh this is life and and you are brave about it or you're not and you move on or you don't it's, it's hard to explain it, it's god it's it's really really hard to put your finger on it as an adult because you don't want to sound like you're um judging your past self and any young adult that's trying to get through their own stuff but you do learn and when you do it's a shock and you know, I didn't even know that there was anything wrong with me. I don't, and I think it was—it wasn't like juvenile deten detention kind of kids. It was kids at risk, and so I know that I was going through a point in my life where, um, from being an AB grade student and and um, really like school, school to just being lost, lost to whatever emotional state that I was going through, and my teachers um, could see that, and they they put my name forward, obviously. So you know. It's that support system around you and, and yeah, it was really, really emotional. Like even now, I've watched the film in the edit as well, like 136 times plus. And I, the other day I got emotional watching the mum, uh, you know, I'm not giving too much away, but when she has her moment at the end of the film and 
even when Mara is saying goodbye to everybody, I remember that palpably and how important that was for me as a teen. Mm. And so every time I watch it, I always get something from a memory of myself or someone else I know. So it's, it always hits, resonates with me. I love it. I watch it all the time. It's weird because I don't do that. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't watch hardly a lot of my work, but for some reason I come back to this one because it's so personal. And tell us about your wonderful cast. Um, you know, all the, you know, you've got a whole um, diverse set of, of young people, but in particular your protagonist. You know, yeah. how did you discover her and how did you work with her on this very personal story? Oh, she discovered me. <laughs> <laughs> I was the lucky one. Uh, uh, we put out this huge call um, and we got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young adults audition. And my casting agent said she'd never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she had to actually buy extra storage or something for her, I don't know what the story, like for a Dropbox or whatever. And um, and it was it was difficult because it was during COVID, so we weren't able to meet with people one-on-one -on -one and it was a lot of conversations online. Um, but you still get a sense of talking to someone, you know, what how they perceive the character. And you could I could see little things that they were relating to that I went, is this a personal story for you? Yeah. Um, but Mara Shante, uh, she she shines like she just is one of those people that can be still in a scene and take up the entire frame. Um, her eyes are so expressive and you can feel that there's this there's this definite connection and I saw that in in the moments that I had speaking to her um, and I just knew straight away that that was Mara you know and and I. As soon as I gave her the script, because she was like, oh my God, I, you know, it's a lot of pressure playing you. And I went, you're not playing me, mm. you're playing Mara. The script is yours now, the story mm. is yours. And I gave all of my cast that freedom, you know. And maybe you can talk us through a little bit your approach in terms of the look and feel of the film. Yeah. Um, capturing the landscape, so you said kind of, you know, coming of age, road movie. <laughs> uh, and do you, I guess, take influence from other filmmakers in that respect? Or do you know, does it, a lot of it just come from what feels right to you to tell your story? Yeah, look, I, I collaborated so beautifully with my cinematographer, Katie Milwright. Um, I just, I have so much respect for my heads of department. I, I am a director, but I'm not a camera person. I'm not a hair and makeup. I'm not a costume. I just, re I really work very strongly with those people that are, that are heads of their department. And so with Katie and I discussing the tone and feel of the film, we really worked together on what our vision was for the heart of the story, but also the country. And for me as a First Nation person, country is not just like a piece of sand or dirt or something. It's it's actually a vein. It's a it's a it's a blood and 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 my spirit and and it's a sentient being. Uh, so that resonated in how I was there in the story, but always with my cast and crew, like how we moved through country, how it became a character, how we decided um, how we would bring Mudder's world in relation to her surrounding of her internal dialogue. And the more she was in, in internalised, we would bring that world around her closer until she started to open up, country started to open up. And, you know, our frames got wider and wider and you saw more of sky and, you know, and so that really influenced us. Mudder's story and her journey influenced us and all of that. So she, she was, yeah, she's a pivotal to the whole thing. <laughs> Although Mitch is very much a lot of the heart as well. Mm. You know, I love all of our characters. I spoke in depth because um, I'm obsessed with character. Mm. So I spoke in depth with all of my cast. And even though you might not ever see it or hear it, on the screen, we talked extensively about why every single line was in there and how they all relate to each other in some way. So that also influenced how we chose to portray each and every person either separately or together. Mm. Yeah. And in terms of going on the journey of this film, what would you say some of the most challenging moments were, whether it was a scene or something that was going on, um, you know, with the funding or anything like that? Or, and then <laughs> the other always phone. funding. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of it, you know, what was like a real highlight for you, a moment that you'll always treasure? Oh, I have to say, 
it was so much fun on yeah. set. I loved my cast and crew. A lot of them I'd worked in on a lot of other projects and I knew that they could film remote. And, and I'm talking like 40 degrees heat, you know, I'm talking rough terrain, um, COVID lockdowns, like the whole gamut of, um, you know, piling one thing on top of the other, but we all did it with such joy to be there telling this story. Mm. And it was the most laid back, um, in a sense, Australian laid back, <laughs> but um, joy is set to be on. Mm. And I think the hardest thing was, you know, maybe it was the COVID lockdowns mm. and, and getting people in and not, um, but also, you know, a short film, I mean, short films, a small budget um, film, you know, you, you always, I think even if you had a big budget, you'd always ask for an extra cool meal. But because um, it was remote and it was a, a traveling, you know, it was a it was a road trip that always layers stuff on top of it, getting down into those gorges with all the equipment, you know. <laughs> but, um, but I think... Uh, that was all, no matter how hard it was, it was always joyous. So, mm. I can't, yeah, I, don't, I can't think that of any moment where I didn't enjoy, I didn't like it. Mm. Um, I always feel so blessed to be a storyteller. Mm. And uh, I think my favourite moment, it's a hard one. It'd have to be showing it at home, mm. you know, to the, to the people that know that story and know me, that was my favourite moment, showing it in Port Helen and Broome, you know. Of course, the premiere in Toronto and Berlin and everywhere is always so amazing, but there's something about showing it in your hometown, which for me is Port Helen and Broome, was just, you know, the pride of the whole community and the love and, you know, it's just, un you can't beat it. Mm. Yeah. And what do you hope that people ultimately take away from watching your film? Or what, what have you found that people, has most resonated with people? Because I guess, you know, it is, as we said, a coming of age story and um, is a road movie. But there's also that element of representation on screen that we, we haven't seen enough of, of yeah. Indigenous, you know, people's stories, yeah. giving voice to those particular stories, which yeah. you know, we just don't have enough variety on screen, particularly in Australian cinema. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really beautiful, the age demographic. Um, and the race demographic of people that have come up and said uh, that they got something from it in, in each and every way. And I've been really s surprised, especially here in Berlin as well. It's such a remote, removed place from Australia. And I just, I knew the audiences would be very different to Australian audiences, but they are so receptive. Um, and it really showed me how universal the story is. And I think it's the, the thing about courage you know and and hope and and um perseverance but i think uh, oh god i think i mean it's it's really it's really interesting because some people said exactly right i've never seen a young indigenous protagonist in an australian film before i am actually the first west australian indigenous person to do a feature film like it's it's and it's like look what year we're in you know that's like crazy in itself um but we we've, we've we've had that support now for the last 10 years where indigenous people are key creatives in telling our own stories and when you have a authentic storytelling it's always going to change and even today in one of the screenings this lady said i never saw that in a film before and i said because you you know she hadn't been back to australia in 20 years and i said 20 years ago, there were no Indigenous people telling Indigenous stories, yeah. um, and that's changing. And so the, the dialogue around my people is changing, you know, and we see more of us on, on screens. Actually, Shante, who plays Mara, mm. and Elvis, um, Pedre, who plays Elvis, two young Indigenous actors were more qualified than the two other non-Indigenous actors mm. who had never acted before. And I've never been on a set where young Indigenous actors um, have had more work than non-Indigenous people. And that was like a, such a joyous moment. I was so proud of them. I was like, look at you guys helping these guys out. And they were so generous with their knowledge of sets. Mm. And, and so were our other older um, cast members. Everyone was so generous to, to guide each other. And it was, I think this sort of storytelling uni unifies us all. Mm. Yeah. And what do you think the power of cinema is or why is representation so important and it does feel like obviously it's not gonna fix things overnight but there's something about 
opening up dialogues, allowing people to understand people they feel very different from. You know, yeah. do, do you think in the broader sense of things it can improve Aboriginal relations in Australia or it can at least play a part in that? Yeah, I think if you, when you don't know something, you're afraid of it. Like until, you know, not like different types of fear. And when you get to understand something better, no matter what it is, you'll always be braver in your understanding and you'll feel like you're allowed to ask questions. I mean, you know, I went in a lot of places where I sometimes I was the first Indigenous person someone had ever met from Australia, living in Australia. And it's just bringing everyone together into our stories and allowing us to not just be consultants or uh, and actually get the, the accreditation, the upskilling and the pay to be the, the original storytellers, the authentic ones. And you get stories... You know, you get people like Ivan San and, and Rachel mm. Perkins and Warwick Thornton and, and these incredible, authentic Indigenous stories coming from people who live, live it and not have an idea of what it might be and get someone to consult. <laughs> and just very quickly, because I'm, I'm out of time, but, you know, what does it mean to you to be here in Berlin, you know, and obviously going on this amazing journey with the film? Um, and do you already know what you're going to work on next? Another feature film. Oh or? my goodness! Being in Berlin is like a, a different, definitely a dream come true. Everyone hears about the Berlinale and they're like, "That's like Mecca." I mean, there's yeah. definite film circuits in the world that is like Mecca. Mm -hmm. And so being here with my first feature film, um, you know, it's just so incredible, and it's and I and it's been so well received around the world. You know, we're the first Australians to win. Um, the NetPack Award at TIFF, and we won at MIF, you know, the Black Magic Award, of course, Black Magic, but um, <laughs> but it, it's it's so completely amazing, and I'm, I'm so grateful to Berlinale, and I'm so grateful to all the audience who have been spectacular, and I just, it made me feel so, so loved over here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know what you'll, you'll do next, or are you going to let well, this Well, I'm, I'm working on, of course, another feature film with Liz Carney from Arena Media, who's one of my best Best friends as well, my producer. So we work, we we make sure we constantly trying to do work together. But I'm actually going on to direct um, season three of Total Control um, with Blackfella Films. So that's like amazing with Deb Mailman and Rachel Griffiths and Rob Collins and all of these people I adore. So I'm very I'm very um, excited about that. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Can't wait yeah. for everyone else to have the opportunity to see your film and really Thank enjoy you. your projects. Thank you. Thank you.